Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode is the Carolina Panthers draft class. Starting with the first pick of the draft, Christian McCaffrey, running back out of Stanford. When it comes to his production, he scored 98.52 in terms of total offensive market share production, which is one of the best scores I have on record since the 1969 NFL draft class. McCaffrey is easily one of the most productive running backs ever. Uh, and on top of that, he pretty much hits all the marks that you're looking for when it comes to all pro, pro bowl, and starter thresholds when it comes to that position. And on top of that, his athleticism isn't that bad either. Scored 72.42 in terms of explosives for his size, 61.07 when it comes to speed for his size, and 91.72 when it comes to flexibility for his size. He essentially has elite flexibility for his size. With the only issue with his profile in arm length, 92% uh, of long-term starting running backs since the 1999 NFL draft class had arm length of at least 31 inches or more, and unfortunately McCaffrey doesn't hit 31 inches when it comes to arm length. There have been two backs within that time span who had less than 31 inch arm length to become long-term starters for Pro Bowl players. One was Chris Johnson, and the other one was C.J. Spiller. I think in McCaffrey's case, I'm not gonna make it I'm not gonna make it a big point of emphasis because I'm the type of guy that when you when you look at his profile, you see all pro level production, you see elite flexibility for his size and above average athleticism traits overall when it comes to explosives and speed. I if he busts because of arm length, if that's the reason why McCaffrey ends up being a bust, then that'd be a very silly reason for him to become a bust. Like I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, so uh, even though there are some questions with McCaffrey based on arm length, like he's not the cleanest profile ever, I still think that there's some positives here when you just look at his other overall profile from that kind of perspective. Uh, then we come to the next pick of the draft in, ter in terms of Curtis Samuel, wide receiver at Ohio State. When it comes to his production, he scored 72.92 when it comes to passing yardage offensive production, uh, which is three-time Pro Bowl level. Uh, and when it comes to athleticism, he scored 65.84 when it comes to explosives for a size, 97.14 when it comes to speed for a size, and 59.88 when it comes to flexibility for a size. He has elite speed traits uh, with pretty decent explosives and pretty decent flexibility. Uh, classic speed wide receiver if there ever was one. And I think he has a very good shot of hitting three-time Pro Bowl level production uh, if, if he just does what he does when it comes to his athleticism so i think this is an excellent pick i think the amazing thing about this draft when it comes to mccaffrey and samuel is that you have two guys who have elite athleticism traits elite mismatch ability with two different types of athleticism you have one guy who is elite flexible and is able to to essentially take advantage of stiff linebackers in space and you have another guy in Curtis Samuel who's just faster than everyone, pretty much. So you have another guy who can outrun him, and, and you have one guy that can outrun him, and another guy that can pretty much outjuke him, if you will. Uh, so I think that's just an amazing combination when you just look at both of these players from an athletic standpoint. And then we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Taylor Mouton, uh, offensive tackle out of uh, Western Michigan. When it comes to his athleticism, he scored 90.87 in terms of explosives for his size, 79.49 when it comes to speed for his size, and 85.94 when it comes to flexibility for his size. This is a excellent pick. Uh, when it comes to Taylor Mouton, the only big issue he has is that he doesn't quite hit the ideal range of height at 6'5", where he needs to be more like 6'6", 6'7", to hit most of the all-pro pro slash pro bowl marks. But he shares something in common in terms of uh, the shorter tackles, like tackles that are less than uh, six foot six, in that their their comparisons kind of match up well. Like he's very similar to Jordan Gross. He's very similar to a lot of other sort of players who have who were less than six foot six, but still became very good long term offensive tackles. And I think that that's kind of the thing with Mouton. I think he has a very good chance to possibly become a Pro Bowl player, despite the fact that he doesn't hit the height thresholds he kind of needs to hit in terms of most long-term stars at the position. And I just think overall you have a guy that is elite explosive and elite flexible, something that your offensive line has been lacking severely. You know, like this is this is Taylor Mouton versus Matt Khalil, just for example, uh, in terms of uh, athleticism. So. Mouton is going to be very, very important to that offensive line going forward 
uh, when you when you talk about just that explosiveness. You've never really had an offensive tackle with that type of explosiveness on that line, and I think it's going to show up. I think it's going to show up a lot that you guys have not been giving Cam Newton the best things when it comes to explosive athletes. So I think this is an excellent pick in terms of uh, Mouton. And also this is Mouton compared to guys like Michael Orr and uh, Mike Reimers, you know, other guys that you've had on the roster. Mouton is just a much more explosive player than those other players. I think he's going to be an excellent pick for you guys to at least be a long-term starter with some Pro Bowl potential based on his athleticism. Then we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Deshaun Hall, defensive end out of Texas A&M. When it comes to his production, he scored 53.14. When it comes to solo tackle market share, 58.42. When it comes to sack market share, and 47.49. When it comes to tackle for loss market share, um, that product, all those production marks aren't exactly excellent. Uh, but he does have very good athleticism. Scored 87.60 when it comes to explosives for his size, 67.142 when it comes to speed for his size, and 83.37 when it comes to flexibility for his size, which are all very, very good marks. His production really caps his overall upside, but here's some reassuring sort of thoughts with him. When you look at Taco Charlton and you look at Deshaun Hall, Taco Charlton, of course, was the late first-round pick that the Dallas Cowboys had. Deshaun Hall is the much more athletic version of Taco Charlton, and I think that it's excellent value to get a player with same production, same athleticism, but actually better athleticism, and you got him rounds later in the draft. So I think this is a great pick in terms of getting a guy who kind of fits what you want, is not necessarily going to be an elite player, but has a very good shot of becoming a long-term starter with very good athleticism. So I think Deshaun Hall is going to be a guy who ends up being a starter for you guys and a long-term contributor at, at the very least when it comes to his overall profile. And we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Corn Elder, cornerback out of Miami. When it comes to his production, he scored 93.70 in terms of solo tackle market share, 91.45 uh, when it comes to pass flexion market share. Excellent production overall, one of the most productive cornerbacks in the entire draft class. His only issues show up with athleticism, only scored 26.47 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 25.92 when it comes to speed for his size, and unfortunately didn't do flexibility testing. Uh, now, I'm one of the bigger fans there is in terms of Corn Elder as a cornerback prospect. I was a big fan of him on film. The athleticism testing is a bit of a scare to me in terms of like how good he's going to be long term. But I think if you look at Corn Elder as a slot defender, a slot cornerback, he could fit that role exceptionally well. That's a role that he's played a little bit at Miami. And I just think when it comes to his production and comes to his other sort of factors, I think he's a guy who easily has a chance to become a long-term slot cornerback for you guys. Could be very Captain Munderland-ish, I guess, is the best way to explain Corn Elder. So I think this is going to be a decent pick for you guys. If he fails because of athleticism, he fails because of athleticism. But I do think that there's enough positives in his production profile that he could kind of buck the trend a bit and become a, a, a pretty impactful uh, player uh, sooner rather than later. Now we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Alex Arma, uh, outside linebacker from West Georgia. When it comes to his production, he scored 20.94 in terms of solo tackle market share production, uh, which isn't very good, and especially for his level of competition in the FCS. Uh, and then when it comes to his athleticism, which is the reason why I believe the Carolina Panthers drafted him, uh, is he had 87.85 in terms of explosiveness, 78.07 when it comes to speed, and 88.79 when it comes to flexibility uh, for his size. So very, very good athleticism overall. It's just his production doesn't really hit special marks when it comes to the FCS level. Most likely will probably become a backup based on his production at that level of competition. But he can become a pretty decent special teams player overall if you just look at him from that kind of perspective. And then the last pick of the draft is Harrison Butker, kicker. I don't do kicker metrics, so I can't really speak on that uh, pick. He could become a starter. He could not become a starter. That's really just a coin flip, really, because uh, I don't really do kicker data. So, uh, But, yeah, so how do I feel about the Carolina Panthers draft class? Well, I think it's one of the best draft classes in, in the in this year guys uh you get a guy you get a running back with elite potential in christian mccaffrey you get a wide receiver with a, an elite skill set in terms of speed for his size and pretty much a very similar profile to john ross except without all the injury history you get taylor mouton a athlete a, a offensive tackle athlete that you've never quite had ever 
you get Deshaun Hall, who's essentially Taco Charlton, but you got him at a at a much better value in a you know in a better round essentially. You got Corn Elder, who's a solid sort of slot cornerback, may not be amazing, high quality, but definitely a starter. And then you got Alexander Arma, who's more of a special teams guy, and of course Harrison Bucker is a special teams guy. It's just an excellent draft. I think you have tons of guys. The top three picks in particular, McCaffrey, Samuel, Mouton, all have potential to be Pro Bowl players. Uh, and some of them have a highly li high likelihood of becoming Pro Bowl players even. Um, so this is just an excellent class uh, overall, especially when you get three players in to start the draft with high impact. So that's just kind of how I view this draft from a data perspective. Lots of players that have a very high likelihood of becoming very successful and we will see what happens in the future. So again, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can follow my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And again, if you like this content, if you want more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.